Welcome to Two Brothers Comics. Today, I'm going to bring you guys our first update on the last Ronin issue number three. If that's something you want to hear about, hit the like button while the intro plays and stay tuned. Now we're coming off the heels of the last run in issue number two, the highest selling printed IDW comic book of all time. Okay, even more than issue number one. Crazy, crazy, crazy numbers. And it was a fantastic read. And guys, they're giving us a second print already. That's right. In shops, March 31st, 2021, we're getting a second printing. And check out this cover. Now that is a pretty cool cover. Obviously, uh, they're taking that image from one of the pages inside of issue number two. We're not gonna leave the spoilers out on this one, uh, but uh, yeah, really, really strong, powerful image there from issue number two. So issue three, that's what we're here to talk about. Uh, with issue number three, I'm thinking that this is really gonna go back into a, a heavy, heavy uh, current timeline story here. Uh, the second issue, we, we did get some of the current timeline, but uh, it was more of a catch up on what happened in the past. And then of course, we had that big reveal uh, with with the two characters that, that kind of aren't here anymore and how they're not here anymore. Uh, so I'm not gonna give the spoilers on that. If you want the spoiler review, we already did that one. But uh, I think we're gonna really start to see the Foot Clan, uh, uh, you know, sh actually searching for Michelangelo here. We didn't really get much of that in the last issue. Um, so I'm excited about that. I'm kind of curious to see if Michelangelo starts to train this rebellion, this underground group uh, that, that wants to, to stand up against uh, Hiroto and the Foot Clan. We already know that uh, Casey Jones and April's daughter, Casey Jones, wouldn't it have been easier just to use Shadow? Come on, guys. Uh, anyway, we, we, we already know that, that her and her friends are ready to fight. They have been training. She is ready for this. Uh, so I think it would be cool to see Michelangelo start to take on more of the sensei uh, role here and, and start to train up his own army uh, because obviously this did not fare too well the first time around. So um, he's going to need some help, but how is he going to be able to put other people who mattered to him uh, in, in the line of fire once again after what happened the first time? Who knows? Um, but I really think this is going to lay the groundwork for the last two issues. Now, we do have to talk about that 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 big huge bear in the room. This is obviously obviously got to be the issue where we find out how and why Casey Jones died. I mean, I mean that that's the cover, guys. That that is the cover. So, you know, um, if you look at this, uh, you you really see uh, the buildings here, and there's some rubble at the bottom, and you see all this smoke behind it. Now, we do know that there was an explosion that caused April O'Neil to lose one of her arms and one of her legs. Um, so, I really think that this is going to dig into that explosion. Did Casey Jones die in the explosion? Uh, this picture kind of tells me yes. Um, if it weren't for this picture here, then my other thought would have been, well, after what happened to Raph and, and their involvement together over the years, you know, maybe Casey Jones took the same route Raph did and went out all alone to avenge Raph. Um, you know, maybe he went out that way, but I really don't think that's what's going to happen. I think that Casey Jones is, is probably going to end up uh, dying in this explosion, which personally for me, being a big Casey Jones fan, I don't know. You know, I, I think he deserves to go out and, 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 you know, like a warrior in battle. And who knows, maybe he will still somehow. Um, but it, it's exciting to, to think about in, in all these different scenarios. I'm definitely interested to see uh, how this explosion happened. Uh, did Leo make it out? Did Donnie make it out? How did April lose an arm and a leg and still live all these years? I mean, this is, this is, this is a lot of questions to be answered here, guys. But, you know, 
It's not going to be much longer and we're going to get it because on May 12th, 2021, issue number three is going to hit shelves. And I don't know about you guys, but I am really, really excited for that. And I'm really excited to see more of these teasers from Tom Waltz as we continue on the road to Ronin 3. Now, just like I talked about at the end of the review for issue number two, if you have not read it already, leave now because I'm going to drop a spoiler. April O'Neil pulled out of a safe the head, what looked to be definitely the head of Fugitoid. I'm telling you guys, we I've still been, I'm still, I'm still betting that Baxter Stockman is gonna somehow have something to do with this storyline. I mean, the Mausers just didn't create themselves, you know what I'm saying? So I'm excited to see if we're gonna get some Baxter Stockman in here, but now, now I'm, I'm what is gonna happen with this Fugitoid head and how is that gonna come into play? Was Fugitoid involved? In, in this explosion somehow was, I mean, I don't know. Now I'm thinking, what if Fugitoid, what if they kind of set him up as a bomb somehow in order to get a friendly on the inside and then he exploded and all that was left was the head? And and what is that going to have to do with the rest of the story? And this is just all speculation inside my head. Uh, I'm not saying any of this is true. Uh, I was wrong on Shadow. I could be 100% wrong on this, but I'm just saying I that that kind of sounds like it would be cool like it would definitely work so we know with fugitoid time travel and, and and you know all these different dimensional travels are possible so it's, it's exciting to see what could come of all of this uh, I, I would love to hear you guys' uh, thoughts on this uh, but before we end the video i do want to show you these awesome images of Hiroto and his mother and uh, in this chamber that we are getting from issue number three, the sneak peek. So check these out, guys. So there we see Hiroto Oroko. Uh, he, he's, he's got a blade in his hand in one of those and he definitely looks really sad. And then the other ones, uh, his mother is in the chamber and he's kind of looking over. It's almost like an open casket kind of deal. And then the chamber seems to be closed as he was walking away. So I, I don't know what to make of all that, but I, we definitely didn't get very much of him and his story in the last issue. So I'm definitely excited to see more in this one. Uh, the last thing I want to leave you guys with before I ask you to please hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not. And uh, leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on issue two and what you think about issue three. Do you think that I could be right? Do you think I'm way off? Uh, thank you guys so much. We're going to leave you with a little roll showing you some of the awesome covers for issue number three. I just want to say right now, I have two covers that are must-haves for me. The A cover and then that awesome Freddie Williams one in ten incentive. Check these out along with some other covers. Guys, you are the best part of Two Brothers Comics, and as always, collect your way. Mm -hmm.